Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, an ICU doctor here to demystify the intensive care unit. Today we're going to talk about what a family meeting is and what to expect if your ICU team asks you to come to a family meeting. So a family meeting is a meeting between the medical team and the patient's family and main decision makers to discuss the patient's clinical status, prognosis, as well as discussing what decisions need to be made. Many times this may come after the medical team individually is giving updates to the patient's family or decision maker, and either the patient is not getting better or appearing to have signs of getting worse. Typically, we ask the patient's family to come in and talk with all of the major players to talk about prognosis, clinical status, and what the patient's wishes would be. So who goes to a family meeting? This varies slightly based on the hospital system. Each one has its differences, but for the majority of family meetings, it is the patient's family, whoever wants to be involved in the discussion, as well as the patient's physician, usually for me, it's the ICU doctor, and there may also be other physicians depending on what the patient's reason for illness is. So if somebody has cancer, the oncologist or cancer doctor may come to the family meeting. If they have heart problems, the cardiologist may come. If the patient had had surgery, and that's one of the major issues why the patient's in the hospital, the surgeon may come. Just so those specialists are available to answer any more specific questions about those medical issues. Some other people who may come to the meeting are the patient's bedside nurse, the social worker involved in the patient's case, the nurse case manager. All of our family meetings, our hospital chaplain comes for emotional support. Overall, this is a meeting between the patient's medical team and care team and the patient's family. So like I said, we discuss the patient's current medical condition and we want to make sure that we're on the same page as the patient's family. I typically start out all family meetings with asking the patient's family to tell me in their own words what the most recent updates about the medical condition are and what they know about the patient's clinical status. I'm able to explain things better if there's any misunderstandings or fill in any additional information that I think is important for them to know if they don't bring it up themselves. Every meeting I start with asking what they know so far. Then I ask them if they have any specific questions for me before I get started on what I have to discuss. So this opens the floor to them if they have anything that they've been really wanting to know or if they have any questions about the treatment or prognosis before I start speaking because then I know what direction they would like the meeting to go in and what the most important things to the family is. I'll also have any other specialists chime in and see if they have anything that they want to discuss before we get started. I'll also have any specialists who come to the meeting say their part before I say mine just because I'm typically there for the full meeting but a specialist may be busy and only have a short amount of time to talk to the family so I want to make sure that the family has all of their questions answered by the specialist. When I talk to a family I usually tell them what the current status is, what the big medical problems are, what we tried to do to attempt to treat the problems, what types of life support the patient's on, and what the potential prognosis is. Then I tell them what the options are from there, whether I think the patient just needs more time and this might be reversible, if I'm not sure if the patient is reversible or not, because I personally don't have a problem telling a patient's family that I'm not sure yet, but we might need to give this more time. Because over time, most patients' bodies will let us know if they're going to go in the direction of healing or if they're gonna to continue to fail. And based on all of my information that I'm giving the family, I ask the family what the patient's wishes would be if they knew where they were in this condition. That opens this discussion to let us know what the patient's goals of care are. Because as we've discussed in prior videos, some people may not want aggressive treatment. Some people may not want certain treatments such as dialysis. Some people might not want resuscitation. So if somebody is critically ill, it's important for everybody to know 
what the patient's status is and what the patient's wishes would be if they knew they were in that condition. Typically when somebody is admitted to the hospital, we'll ask them what their wishes are, but as somebody's clinical status changes and if they're worsening, they may have told their family, you know, if it looks like I'm not getting better, I don't want all of these things, or I want aggressive treatment until my heart stops. So these are all very personal things. These are personal decisions, which is why we bring all of the family members in to know what the patient would want for themselves. And then I always tell the family that they don't need to make any big decisions that day. There's always a chance in the intensive care unit that somebody can worsen and their heart may stop. But if they're listed as full code, we will attempt resuscitation until the point the family tells us not to. For big decisions such as if we think a patient might need a tracheostomy for chronic respiratory failure, if we think that they might need a more permanent feeding tube, these are things that we let the family sit with and think about and see how the patient does over a couple days before they make any decisions. And if the patient's family is thinking about removing life support because it is not in line with the patient's wishes, they may want to talk to additional family members who are not present for the meeting before they get back to us. So I always tell them that there's no rush in terms of making these decisions. They don't need to make the decision today because I think a lot of family members come to these family meetings feeling pressured that they have to decide that day. A lot of times family members will come to the meeting already in the back of their mind with a decision that's made. They just want to clarify certain things with the medical team before they proceed. So if you are asked to go to a family meeting for somebody you're a medical decision maker for, some good ways to prepare are what I typically tell family members to do is write down all their questions that they may have because I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed with the information and they forget what questions they had until they leave. And I'm always welcome for them to call me afterwards if they wanted to further discuss things, but I think writing things down is helpful. And even during the meeting, for them to write things down, sometimes people will bring a notebook and a pen and just write down what is being said and what the big medical problems are, what the treatments we tried are, because many times this is a small group of people that go back and report to a larger group of people and they want to make sure that all their information is accurate. If you have any more questions about what is involved in a family meeting, please leave them below and I will be back on Friday with another video.